Okay, so bottom line is when you're measuring somebody and working with somebody, you got to you have to weigh and measure them in the same clothing, same time of day, in the same scale, right? For body fat, same method. We know we don't like the hydrostatic. Any I mean, hydrostatic is impossible because it's too expensive. Right? You can't do it very often. But obviously, a gold standard. But we're not. We're, we're certainly not doing that. Calipers are the simplest, safest way, non-invasive way of doing it, and consistent. Just because it might be a percent or two off, it doesn't matter. As long as it's directionally correct, you're going in the right direction. You, it'll tell you that, right? So that's all we've ever used. So that's the best way to do it. And that way you can really balance out if you're losing muscle or if you're losing body fat or both, right? And then you only adjust, you know, you, you wait. You go, you, you go through a full seven days before you get adjusted or 14 days when it comes to uh, when you're measuring body fat. Okay. So here, these algorithms are actually in the computer, right? So when you're using our program, this is what you're getting. The, the, a, so a measurable distance should take place in a regular, consistent manner. And if it doesn't, the computer actually comes up and tells you this. It's all laid, laid there. So if you're measuring their body fat or if you're weighing them and it comes up and you enter their new goal, it's going to tell you what to do. It's going to say, what do you want to do? But what you want to do, and this is, I'm just kind of giving you the information here. Right. If progress stops or slows dramatically, right, one or more, or a combination of the two, needs to restart the process. Now, increased daily activities, that's always the goal. That's the easier thing to do. People don't realize as they start working out, losing body fat, their daily activities slow down. That's their body tricking them. They may be doing the same work in the gym, but they're not losing weight or they're not losing body fat. But if they can just move more during the day and have hours and hours to do that. I put some examples in here, right? Standing and pacing burns one and a half to two times more calories than sitting. So the average person sits at least seven, six, seven hours a day. You know, people that have the, the normal jobs, right? We're not talking about laborers or things like that. If that person sits that much, can you imagine burning one and a half to two times more calories by standing rather than sitting in part of that time? Crazy. And I put some notes in here. Approximately, there's about 2,000 to 2,500 calories uh, or steps, I'm sorry, right, in a mile. Walking 2,000 steps will burn 75 to 150 more calories, depending on the individual size, obviously, than sitting in the same time period. 20 to 30 minutes, right, can be done anywhere, even in the office or while you're on the phone. Never, ever do anything. If you can do it standing, do it standing, pace, just like I am right now, rather than me sitting down on, on, on the, you know, and doing my videos or doing any of those things, I will stand up, right? Do any of those things. And when you're on the phone, just stand and pace. You'd be surprised how many more calories you can burn without having to drop your calories. That's the big thing. Now, the other thing is, of course, we can increase your exercise time, right? So cardio workout time or intensity and include interval training. So example, if you're doing 30 minutes, five days a week, and you're at a plateau, you go to 45 and add interval work, right? So you're, you're, you're two minutes of a sprint or a minute in a sprint, and you're back coming down, and then another minute of a sprint. And that way you can stay in the same time frame. And then finally, I always like to do this last because this might be first. You have to remember, if they're already doing a lot of work, this could be first. Uh, decrease food intake, approximately two to 300 calories a day, or just remove the small portion of their largest meal of the day. All right, and then finally, you'll end up at a three days low. If they really want to go low, like we do for bodybuilders, three days low, one day high, and I'll give you a map on that. And then you can also add dietary support. So we're already taking a multivitamin mineral. They're having a protein supplement before and after a workout. That's baseline. Every person you work with, that's automatic, right? But there's other things, as you know, thermic cell, carb repel, and weight loss and liver support that can help significantly get them over that diet hump through all those things. All right, so at the end of the day, you repeat the process anytime body fat is stable for at least one week. And always remember, if you stop losing fat, you need to eat less, move more, or a combination of the two, regardless of what you read on the internet from your searches or what you hear from others. Bottom line. But also, as you lower the calorie intake, you have to make sure your protein stays up, that gram per pound, no matter what. <clears throat> so again, just be careful there all the way around. Now, every once in a while, you can adjust a diet and give them a little more protein, less carbs, or a little more carbs and less protein or something to make them move more. But that bottom line, they're still moving more. All right. But the bottom line, you have to make sure those are the two things you deal with right there. So this is what it looks like. Right. 
<clears throat> this comes up. And that's why, you know, when it comes up and it asks for the client's weight every seven days, or if you're doing body fat every 14 days, weight and body fat, enter it. And everything I just told you will pop up right here. What do you want to do? You're off goal. Here's what you need to do, right? Do you want to extend your goal? We'll change your menus. And that automatically happens as you push a button, you know, whatever you want to do. And this is the secret sauce to the whole program at the end of the day, right? Get, you got your feedback, so use it. And that's why you're, you're getting, you know, a, the right opinion there for the client as well. All right. Now, again, so the amount of work it takes to get, I always like to tell people this ahead of time. The amount of work it takes me to get to your goal is not what it takes to maintain it, depending on a few things, obviously. Once you get to your goal, right, we can increase your calorie intake because if we keep, if you, we keep adding more work and, and every, again, you keep losing weight and you've lost, you've gone down, lost a pound a week, right? And you're at your goal. If I keep, if I keep dropping you, you're going to, you're going to keep losing a pound a week until you die. Right? So obviously you don't know, can stop doing that. And we can actually raise it back up. Because what it takes to get there is not necessarily what it takes to maintain it, depending on how long you were really, you would stabilize. So if you've been in this, if you've stabilized that where you wanted to end up was, you know, 150 pounds, you wanted to end up at 150 and 10% body fat. Okay. And if you've been there for six weeks, then that's what it takes to maintain it. But if you were coming down to that, I could probably bring you up 500 calories a day. That's huge. Right. And cut back on some of the exercise that got you there. So keep that in mind, maintenance. Just plug in a new goal for the, for the client. That's all we do. Plug in a new maintenance goal for the client. 